The following program is available 24-7 on YouTube, GodTube, and at livingwithvictory.org. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. And from His holy hand, healing virtue flows. He's got the keys to what you need. Death and hell He will defeat. There's a promise. It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Living with Victory Ministries and listeners like you. Now, here are your hosts, Laureen and Tony Giorgio, with today's message of perseverance. Welcome to Living with Victory, where life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to have peace, joy, and victory in the midst of of the storm because Jesus is your umbrella. Hey, hi, this is Tony Giorgio. Welcome to another edition of Living with Victory. And before we go too far into the program, I want to let you know once here in front how you can get in touch with us. Quickly, I can tell you, I know you don't have something to write with, but later on I'll repeat it again midway through. All right. Our email, Living with victory at gmail.com that's living with victory at gmail.com and you can just write us let us know how you think of the program good bad doesn't matter if it's helping we'd love to know that prayer request and also if you'd like to support us we appreciate that because we are listener driven and we do need the help to continue this ministry also you can go to our website at livingwithvictory.org, livingwithvictory.org. And on, on the home page, you can click the contact button or you can go directly to get any free offers that we have on the program from there and let us know what you want. And if you do want something that we're offering to send you, make sure you give us your mailing address, okay? Or just if you need prayer Just put your prayer request down. We have you on our list. We want to pray with you and help you along. And now, without further delay, I want to say good morning to my wonderful sidekick for 51 years almost. Mm -hmm. And she has the topic of the day and the scripture. Hey, Laureen. Hi. Hi, everyone out there. I'm glad you're joining us today. We're talking about Hebrews. 11.6. Do we diligently seek God? But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. To me, this scripture is the foundation of Christianity to me. Faith in God, Jesus, is what pleases him. We cannot please him without faith. How do we build that faith? By seeking him out, by getting to know him. The word diligently is a constant effort to accomplish something, attentive and persistent in doing it done or pursued with persevering attention, painstaking, careful, thorough, dedicated, committed. You know, if you lose something precious in your home, don't you turn that house totally upside down trying to find it? That's how we should be looking for Jesus. We should be turning that Bible inside out to really get to know who that Savior is and really apply what is in that Bible and the truth that he chooses to show you that particular day. It would make such a difference to your life. I've been following the Lord for about 61 years now. God, that number is getting higher and higher. (laughs) Wow, um, thank you. Through all of that time, he has never failed me. He is so subtle that he takes care of even the very smallest problems. And those small problems that he takes care of for me mean more to me than even the big ones. I mean, I'm happy that he healed me of cancer. Don't get me wrong. But when he provides for me to help pay a bill, 
that I didn't think I would have the money and shows me how to do it. That, to me, is very personal. When I'm feeling a little depressed or discouraged, now, he knows I love hummingbirds. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and in the spring and the summer, he'll, I can look out my kitchen window, and there'll be a little one, sh- his little wings going like crazy there, yeah, you know, me, saying, me, hi, me. I'm here. You want to feed me? <laughs> But anyway, uh, he knows the joy that gives us. We all have different likes and dislikes. He's, he made us all different. But he knows what matters to you. That's personal. That's a very personal God. That's not somebody up there who's giving us a lot of rules to follow. No, he's saying, come follow me. Oh, man, that's so different. Oh, that is so different. Following him is an exciting journey. It's following the one who died for us, who loves us, you know he cares for you. In the 23rd Psalm, there's that one verse says that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that is so true. I did it with my breast cancer. I mean, I really couldn't worry if I tried. When they say you have peace that goes beyond understanding, I never really experienced it until that time. But there is his peace. And I tell you, once you enter that peace, you can go through anything. You can absolutely go through anything with him. We're not saying that if you seek him diligently, wow, everything's going to disappear and you're going to be walking on Not at all. No, but I think what we've tried to be an example for was, no, that doesn't necessarily occur, but after what we've been through for over 50 years together, we're still standing and we're still praising God in spite of it all because we know that if it wasn't for him, we would not be here. Between her cancer, my phlebitis, how many bankruptcies, loss of job, you name it. You say you can equate with that kind of stuff because that's life. The thing is diligently seeking him, number one, to say he's real. He's alive today. He is a real person I can go to, the person of Jesus Christ. There's a difference, just like you you go to your friends. But sometimes friends let you down. But here, he doesn't let you down. The reason why we think, and I do too sometimes, when it doesn't work out the way I'm asking him, I say, hey, man, you know, I wanted this and I didn't get it. It's because he is the I am. He's in your future, your past, and your present. So if he's in the future, he's seeing the warning signs that if he gave you what you want, that may not be good for you. And we've done that a million times. And I've been a victim more times than you can imagine out of my own wants and needs. And because I never really sat down and diligently sought out the God of the Bible. But as time went by, I realized, well, you know, I really don't know him. I'm reading this scripture. I I can't make it out. Well, go the next step and find out what it's about. There are commentaries. It's on your app, mobile phones, you name it, the internet. You have access. It takes you a few seconds. It's not like years ago. We're just not saying that everything is going to be pie in the sky. It's just not that way. And Jesus Christ said that. Well, that's why we say you can have peace, joy, and victory in the midst of your storm. That's why I I bring up my breast cancer, because that is where I really learned. I mean, I always used to read the Bible, and I heard that his grace was always sufficient for me. But not until I had my breast cancer did I understand what his grace was all about. We know that you have needs and that those circumstances sometimes make you feel like you are overwhelmed and those waves are just way over your head. We just want you to understand that in the midst of all of that, God is standing right there. Jesus is as close as saying his name. 
you're really never left alone. And when you feel you're alone, that's just a lie from Satan. So you have to tell him in the name of Jesus, get on your way. I don't want to be bothered with you. Just go to the Lord and tell him, I'm feeling extra weak at this point. I need you to bring me up. And he does. He brings us up from glory to glory. And he does it in such a subtle way that when you are seeking him, diligently seeking him, you get to know his commandments. You get to know his promises. You get to know him. And you will find that a similar situation may come along maybe six months later, and you don't, won't react the way you did the first time. You don't even know that it's happened. But remember, when you receive Christ, he's living inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside you and only he can change you. You cannot believe or have faith in him if you don't believe that he exists or that he is the great I am. I just love that. He is the I am. There is no other I am. In fact, I'll go one step further. If by chance you don't believe that God exists, diligently seek him anyway. It will give you a different perspective of who he is, and you may totally be surprised at what you learn. I have a a story where it made me understand that, yeah, he was inside of me, and I never thought of it before in what had happened, because, you know, we did a lot with advocating for children and their treatments, as you remember, and I won't mention any names. I'm talking to a, a dear friend, and the way we met was trying to help her child in a situation where the hospital was trying to get $50,000 from them before the treatments, and it was a tumor on his skull. She just was beside herself because she didn't know what to do with this bill, $50,000. And I spoke to her just the other night. We were having this wonderful conversation, and she was telling me about all that I had done and eventually became one of our board members. But when she started talking, I said to her, that really wasn't me. What happened? She was praying, and she was beside herself. And along comes this stranger who has no experience, who just started this faith-based organization advocating for kids. And I don't know if it was in a newspaper or what, but I, I got hold of the story. I called. I tried to help. And she frantically trying to figure this out. I came along and through diligently seeking God, and today I realize this, that he was in me because what happened was a miracle. And Mm -hmm. she reminded me of this, and I'm saying, no, 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 that, that can't be me. I actually talked the hospital out of that $50,000 and let him continue to get the operation. It right. wasn't me. And when she said that, I realized that was a God thing. Who do you know? What a hospital and administrator is going to give up fifty grand? No way. But God. But God. That's how we did compassion completely was through praying for each family and child that came to us because we knew that we couldn't do it in and of ourselves. We needed God to guide us. We prayed constantly for each child. How can we do this? I mean, it was overwhelming. We didn't know which doors to knock on. And it was amazing how God made a way each time. Let me take a short break, give you more information on contacting, all right? If you're looking to contact us, you have something to write down, something with, you can. We are at livingwithvictory at gmail.com. That's our email address. And if you want, you just tell us how you like the program. Like I said, if you have a prayer request, if you've got something going on, we'll put you on the list. We'll pray for you without a doubt. Or if you want, you can go to our website, livingwithvictory.org. And you can click on the contact button and you can just put your request in there. If you feel that our messages are helping you, we would love to hear from you in support because that's what keeps us going. And all you have to do is hit the donate button and any amount donation will help us. And we appreciate that. Further on in the program toward the end, our announcer will give you the rest of the information. All right, Lori. Okay. When we care enough 
to really go after knowing him, it becomes easier to believe him. Do you believe his promises? Now, you may believe God exists in some way, but do you believe his promises? Do you know him enough to know that he cannot lie, that what he promises will come to pass? When we actively include him in our lives, it does say that we will be rewarded. And those rewards come with the peace that you can have. He gives healing in all areas of our lives. Whatever it is, he knows where your healing is needed. He does provide for all of our needs. You know, you say, why do we have to go through these problems? Why do we have to have different issues that come up? When we don't hurt ourselves in some areas, we can't comfort anyone else. And there are other people out there, you know, we get a blessing through what we are going through. We are to share that blessing, not hang on to it, because then it gets tainted. But if you take that blessing that God has given you through whatever circumstance you're going through, and you see someone else in a similar situation, and you start to comfort them, and start to tell them how you made it through, and how much God loves them, then that becomes something beautiful. Then you could say to yourself, oh, now I know why God brought me through that, so that I can help somebody else. You know, experience is the best. Is the best teacher, my God. Right. And and this is why we do this program. If you'd look back over our lives, you'd say they're out of their minds. They, they, I don't know how they, ex- how could they praise God for that mess? It, well, it, God never promised us anything on this earth. He said, you will have trials. and tr-. He said, you're going to have trouble. But he knew he was in the boat, remember? The storm. Where do you have such an assurance of a person, God, the I am, to stand up and calm the storm and literally tell the storm to be still and it was still? What are we talking about here? The power, the majesty. He knew it. He's there. But you have to go to him and say, Father... Dad, I need this. You go to your father and say, hey, I need this. That's the whole thing. That's what we're trying to say, diligently seek him. It's not always easy. I don't have a great time every morning when I'm looking there and I'm reading my passages and saying, yeah, right, but I still got that pain in my side. My wife says other things, but that's (laughs) beside the point. But it happens. But it's not our time. It's his time. But it does happen. You have to just take deep breaths and really get to know. And with us, we're doing the program and all. We want to make sure that what we tell you is the truth, and it's based. In fact, it's in the Bible. It is written. It's not just us giving you what we think. So understand, we're giving you the Word of God, and we've proved it out over, like Lorian said, 60 60 years, honey. (laughs) I told Mm, you the number gets Mm -hmm. higher. Thank you. (laughs) You know, when we say diligently seek him, it means seeking his face, really getting to know him as a friend, not just someone who can give you something or can, you know what I'm saying? When you want a relationship, you want to know that the other one loves you for who you are, not for what you can give them. That's the type of relationship he is looking for. He wants to know that we can trust him, but he also wants to know that he can trust us. When I heard that the first time, that really struck me. God wants to trust me. He thinks he can trust me. <laughs> me? You know, I know my faults. But yes, he wants to trust us. And I'll tell you, there is no other relationship that is so satisfying and freeing. The more you get to know him, the freer you become. Your faith grows and you get closer to him. And just know that when you pray, he hears you and is working on your behalf. One of the best rewards is that fear, anxiety, and worry become a thing of the past. Because you finally realize my Redeemer lives. Yeah, He's real. 
He didn't just go to the cross and, and die. He rose. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Here, here are our rewards. We don't have to live with fear and anxiety and worry. We don't have to think about what the future holds, whether we're going to have a hard time or not, because the circumstances do not dictate our joy and peace and victory. He is in the midst of whatever circumstance is going on. He never changes. He is always the same. And that is something we have to learn. Just because we may be having a problem doesn't mean God doesn't love you or that he has abandoned you or that he doesn't care. He has a purpose. He has a plan for each one of our lives. Remember the woman who had the issue of blood pushing through the crowd? Now, you know, that's a story and you can picture it, but think of pushing through a crowd in a large city to get through, to get to somebody. Understand, this woman was sick for 13 years. She was not feeling well. And what she did was she pushed through until she got, she persevered. It's also part of diligent persevering pursued with persevering attention that that's another explanation she wanted to touch his hem and she was healed through her diligence i was healed that day in my face that's with right. that story through my diligence that's right and, and you can too <laughs> <laughs> and remember, I'm living proof here with 12 clots in my leg when I was 29. And the doctor said most or younger people that have this situation happen were dead, gone. It killed them. And one did go through my heart, the clot, and one through my lungs. And with no damage, he's there. He's alive. It's not just us. It's for you. Try to think back through the times when you were having a terrible circumstance going on in your life and you thought that you would never make it, you thought it was all over. And look back and see what God did for you. No matter what the circumstance is, he is the creator of this universe. He is the creator of you and me. There is nothing that is too powerful for our Lord or impossible. I am here, okay, 45 years later after that incident with the blood clots. Yes, I have to wear surgical stockings. Yes, my leg swells if I don't wear them. But I came out of it alive and well. And what I've done over 30, 40 years, that hasn't affected me. It just hasn't. That's what we're saying and with the world, the way it is, with the chaos. And everybody's against you. And don't tell me about Jesus. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to... We need to be diligently seeking our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't let go of that. That's what I leave you with. Remember, he is your umbrella in the storm. We love you. Let us hear from you, okay? This is Tony. And Laureen. Have a great week. Love you. Help Laureen and Tony in their ministry by becoming a Living with Victory partner. You can make a donation of any amount through PayPal at livingwithvictory.org or send your check to Living With Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. That's Living With Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. listening to Living with Victory with Laureen and Tony Giorgio, who for over 30 years have advocated for seriously ill children through Compassion Children's Foundation, today known as Living with Victory Ministries. Support for this radio ministry and our outreach programs comes from listeners like you. Many families that have children that need daily treatments for their illness are extremely challenged due to the cost of simply getting to the treatment facilities. Our Fuel for Life outreach supplies gas cards to these families at four children's hospitals. 
You can support our outreach programs by sending your tax-deductible donations to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. If you'd like to become a sponsor of this radio ministry program, we'd love to hear from you as well. Podcasts of this program and past programs are available at YouTube, GodTube, and at our website, livingwithvictory.org. Thanks for listening. The preceding program is available 24-7 on YouTube, GodTube, and at livingwithvictory.org.